A key part of the future of manufacturing is not just industrial digitalization, which is the topic that everybody's been talking about, what with the Made Smarter review, the, made, the launch of the Northwest pilot here at Smart Factory Expo, but also about the, the whole way manufacturing operates in the future in a way that looks after resources, looks after waste, and ultimately looks after the planet. I'm delighted to be joined today by Martin Chilcott, who is somebody who's been devoting a lot of time and energy to this very subject, um, and is now, uh, that's on a sort of global scale, now moving into the manufacturing space. I'm gonna to have to ask you to enlighten the audience yep. about the, the, you know, your progress from here, or from there to here. Two Degrees was, is, is your original company. Yep. Tell us what Two Degrees does yep. before we move on to manufacturing. Right, so, so Two Degrees still operates, um, and our history has been in helping collaboration across large supply chains to enable companies to work together to become more sustainable, use their environmental resources much more efficiently. And we've done that for people like Tesco and Asda and GlaxoSmithKline. So very large numbers, mainly manufacturing, getting them to share best practice across the normal business silos. So now you're talking about Manufacturer 2030, which is a new development by two degrees. You're sharpening the focus by the sound of it. That's absolutely right. So we've taken all of that knowledge and, and an awful lot of other people have come to help us as well. So the knowledge that we didn't have. So people like the US Department of Energy have been absolutely critical in this process, collected vast amounts of data so that we can understand what are the best practices that factories need to implement if they're to be best in class in resource efficiency, which is what we need them to be. I know that we've been working with you on a research project about resource efficiency. You've seen the, the headlines from that. Were you pleased with what you saw or do you believe there's, there's a lot more work to be done? Well, I think there are good and bad about both. And the good news is that senior executives, the C-suite, is increasingly focusing on the importance of resource efficiency and sustainability, particularly in large companies. As you drop into smaller companies, less obvious that, that, that they're as engaged. The challenge now we're finding is between intent and implementation. That is so often what we hear, that you know, it's a great idea, let's all buy into it notionally. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually about pulling the trigger and about saying we will develop new systems yeah. that are going to make us more efficient. Yeah. I wonder if there is a bit of a disjunct between people saying, well, yeah, that's a great idea, but I've got a factory to run, yeah. without sort of connecting the way they're running the factory with the end result that they appear yeah. to be so committed to. Yeah, well, this is what, this is the fact that the gap we're trying to bridge with Manufacture 2030. So we have a software as a service platform which enables engineers in the factory who have the day-to-day -day practical challenges of getting product out as well as making it as efficient as possible. Um, and we are, that platform makes the knowledge you require and the project management tools that you require and the re measurement and reporting that's required available at the touch of a button on your computer screen um, at a fraction of the cost of hiring in a consultancy. And so we think we're going to create a game changer in being able to enable businesses to implement, which is what otherwise a very messy and difficult uh, activity. It should be pointed out that we're not really talking about you know, how to save money on your electricity bill, although it could be part of that because this is not just resource efficiency in terms of waste, it's just about how we use the resources globally yeah. that we have at our disposal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, the planet is under enormous pressure. We know that we're heading towards 10 billion people. And it's great that the middle class in that 10 billion people is growing very rapidly. I mean, it creates markets for us and out of those markets we create wealth. But consumption at that level by that many people, if it is not uber efficient, is obviously fundamentally dangerous for all of us. And factories, if I just take an element, are responsible for 36% of all greenhouse gases. So it's a very large component that just comes out of the manufacturing process that needs to be addressed. What are you saying to policymakers about this? Are you getting any kind of support from them? Do they buy into it? Uh, is there any you know, pressure they can put on the levers on this? Well, it's very, uh, policymakers are really important. Of course, we felt we had a great breakthrough in Paris, on the Paris Agreement. It's a bit of a setback with 
Trump and one or two things since. But we are finding that companies, I think, and this is the interesting, companies drove that breakthrough very largely. They said, we need, we recognize that we don't have a long-term future if we don't sort this out. So this is existential for us. We also recognize that we need a level playing field. And the only way you can get a level playing field is if we have some sort of policy which is uniformly around the globe implemented. And that's what you know starts to come out of Paris. I'm also thinking locally about the UK. Uh, the government has finally got behind an industrial strategy yeah. after years, I'm not talking about this government, years of governments yeah. in the plural, yeah. sort of really missing the plot. Yeah. And now we believe they're getting their act together. Yeah. I would have thought resource management and resource efficiency was something that fit very well into an yeah. industrial strategy. Yeah. Is there any hope that, that we can actually make that happen? Yeah, no, indeed. So uh, the industrial strategy definitely has very significant components about clean energy, no doubt about that. Um, it also has some gaps at the moment, but which I think in its spirit and its direction fit in very nicely. So one of the interesting, uh, by un unintended consequences of the rapid switch to electric vehicles that we are going to have is huge amounts of pressure on the grid around the consumption and use of energy. We are likely to have much more risk of interruption of supply for manufacturers than before, as all those cars that run on petrol currently and, and diesel switch to electricity. It's going to be massive. So it's, uh, there are unintended consequences inside that strategy, which I am sure will ev evolve, become clear, and, uh, and implementation will come around it. Do you believe that some of the technologies being worked on by companies like Rolls-Royce, BLC, they're into the small modular reactor yeah. game, which offers a future where we have literally small nuclear reactors yeah. in towns or even on large industrial estates. Yeah. Is this something that you embrace at Manufacture 2030? Uh, or, or do you see this as something that's possibly a retrograde step? Well, uh, whether we're talking about small nuclear reactors per se or the notion of uh, distributed generation, um, I have two different feelings. I'm not sure about nuclear reactors all over the place feels to me there might be high security risks around that. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert at that exactly. But we are going to move to a world where on-site and local regional generation becomes a dominant norm. A large centralized model of power generation distribution will dissolve and very rapidly. What you're talking about means that what we're already seeing at sort of local regional levels companies working together in a much more um, holistically 360 degree, he said using a lot of cliches, uh, but self-interested yeah, manner. Yeah. Uh, self-interest being that your interest, you may be at a different company from me, yeah. but together we have a yeah. shared interest yeah. in making things work better all yes. round. I think collaboration is frankly the future for manufacturing. Absolutely essential in all levels. I mean, in terms of the sharing of data and IP, but also down at the materials and energy level. So it could be that I buy excess energy from you because you have a food processing plant and you're taking the husks and the leftover and you're putting it into an anaerobic digestion plant. You're generating out of that uh, liquid gas and energy, and maybe I'm buying my energy from you as a result. But also in other ways, you may have off, you may have off cuts from your production line that I can recycle and reuse. The, the whole circular economy, which we are going to move into, which is enabled by the digital uh, revolution that we're beginning to see in manufacturing, depends upon collaboration. So you're absolutely right. Collaboration is at the heart of this. It is about sharing. It's sharing yeah. information. And that, that, of course, is where the digital works yes. so well. It's about instant communication of information. Martin, I wish you enormous success you. with this. I think that you're onto something massive. Uh, and I hope that we can uh, you know, follow, your, your, follow your journey well, as you progress. progress. I hope so. Thank you very much indeed for having me. Martin thank Chilcott, you. thank you. Pleasure, thank you.